Modern Horizons 2 spoiler season is in full swing, and there are a bunch of really interesting cards ranging from Sinister Squirrel Lords all the way up to Protective Godly Angels. Magic. I am a wizard. History. I'm an old wizard. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here for one of the funnest parts of being a Magic player, aside from playing the game, and that is learning about a whole bunch of brand new cards that we're going to be able to get our mitts on soon. All right, so let us dive in because we have a lot of cards to talk about. We're going to start out with one of the most exciting cards, this guy right here, Chatterfang Squirrel General. So you're not seeing things wrong, we have a legendary Squirrel Lord now. So he has one green and two for a 3-3 three, three Squirrel Warrior. 3-3, three, three. that's some beefy stats for a squirrel, let's be real. Like elephants in Magic the Gathering, normal everyday mammoths are portrayed as 3-3s. Three, three. So this squirrel is as beefcake as an elephant. And that's before you even start getting into the abilities. So Chatterfang has Forest Walk, so... Good luck blocking him if you're playing green. He's going to get you through the trees, son. The abilities are as follows. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. So not only does it double the number of squirrel tokens you generate if you're making squirrel tokens normally, but if you create any other kind of tokens at all, you automatically get squirrel tokens, right? And that's pretty amazing. They don't even have to be creature tokens that are being created just any kind of tokens by the way here are your bonus squirrels and one black sacrifice x squirrels target creature gets plus x minus x until end of turn now that is pretty versatile because it can be used in multiple ways you can either use it to beef up a creature or destroy a creature right so for example with chatterfang if i was to pay one black and sacrifice two squirrels then i'd be able to give him plus two minus two so all of a sudden he'd be a five one and survive but if my opponent had a three three i wanted to get rid of i could just pay one black sack three squirrels and go boom there you go minus x minus plus three minus three to your three three it's a six zero and it's dead so chatterfang is pretty versatile the fact that you only have to pay one black mana to activate that is really really strong and i love the artwork for this it shows chatterfang like barreling down a tree instead of like scampering down like look at the squirrels in the background they're kind of leaping and scampering he's standing up on his back like what you want something and he even has markings on his tail that are somewhat reminiscent of like skunk like markings right i mean they're green instead of white but either way the point of the marking on the skunk is to be instantly recognizable and let you know what the thread is so that's like a natural way of saying i'm not your everyday squirrel i will ruin you so i have to say man this is going to make squirrel enthusiasts very excited because this is a really really solid card you know you can build a commander squirrel deck around this really easy and i gotta say i really dig the vibe of it so let's move on we're gonna have a number of squirrel cards to talk about today next up here is the squirrel sanctuary so that's one green for an enchantment that says when squirrel sanctuary enters the battlefield create a one one green squirrel creature token whenever a non-token creature you control dies you may pay one mana if you do return squirrel sanctuary to its owner's hand so essentially it's just a reusable squirrel token generator, which clearly combines quite well with the legendary that we just looked at, right? Because not only are you generating tokens, so for one mana, you're going to get two squirrels with him out. But also, when you're feeding squirrels into that plus X minus X ability, you're going to be able to pay one mana to bounce this back to your hand. And since it only costs one to activate the sack ability, you're going to be able to go buck nutty with this, right? So that's pretty that's pretty solid i mean it's not like the most amazing card in the world but as a sort of enabler for squirrel decks to keep them running with a bunch of squirrels yeah every time you lose every time you lose a creature you're gonna have the opportunity to replace it the artwork is quite nice as well you just see this kind of pathway wandering through the woods you got the trees creating this little framed doorway and you've just got squirrels hanging out all over the place although Wait a minute, are those tombstones? <laughs> Wait, are they in a graveyard? Is the squirrel sanctuary a graveyard? Man, squirrels have taken a dark 
turn. Like, this is a nice, idyllic bit of artwork, but that's they're hanging out in a graveyard. All right, that's intense. Let's move on. Then we've got Squirrel Sovereign, a straight up uncommon squirrel lord. So one green and one for a 2-2 squirrel noble. I love it. The other squirrels recognize his nobility. You can see it in his eyes. When he handed me the nut, I could feel his noble essence. So other squirrels you control get plus one, plus one. And the flavor text says, for rule of the Aldering Forest, Numstale stole the acorn from Nestwind, who stole it from Branky, who stole it from Lightroot, who stole it from Leafpaw, who stole it from Darkfur. So I guess the idea is you become a squirrel noble by stealing the acorn of rulership. I don't know. It's funky. I do dig the way that this squirrel's head, like he's got crazy little furry protrusions coming. It almost looks like a, like a hawk is nesting on his head, but either way, it gives him a crown vibe, right? And he does look a little bit different than your everyday squirrel with that speckled vibe. But this is a very idyllic, peaceful bit of artwork. And after seeing them squirrels in the graveyard, you know, I can, <laughs> I feel like this is all right. I'm cool with this. Not too shabby. Squirrel lovers are going to enjoy this. Moving on, we've got surprise, another squirrel. There, we're going right back to dark, crazy town. So it's a hybrid black or green. Now it's one, one. It is whenever you sacrifice an artifact or creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ravenous Squirrel. Pay one black, one green, and one. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. You gain one life and draw a card. The squirrels here are absolutely insane. Look at this. This squirrel has a bunch of dead bodies shoved into the tree. Normally, you'd be like, I'm going to hide nuts away for the winter. But nah, you know what? Let's shove this bird wing in here. We'll throw a human arm in here. It went out and bit a snake gah, right in the what in the neck. I guess snakes don't really have necks. Or are snakes all neck? Either way, it bit a snake, gah, right? And it ended it and dragged it up into the tree. This thing is vicious. You can see the blood leaking down, man. And the second ability literally represents this squirrel being what sacrifices the artifact or creature. So you're basically like you point at one of your troops and the squirrel goes ah, and like leaps up at his throat. It's like, oh no. It's almost like a Monty Python skit. But this is a vicious, dangerous squirrel and it eats everything and just gets bigger and bigger. It's so intense. And the flavor tag says, nope, no monsters in the forest. Nothing in there but squirrels. Uh, no, there are some monsters out there. This is a very dark and scary squirrel, and I like it. I like giving the squirrels an extra level of menace. That's fun. Moving on, we have got Wonder, and this is a wonderful representation of the card. So, this is a reprint. Wonder already existed, all right? We've had it for a while. It's one of the incarnations, which is a really cool concept. So, Wonder is one blue and three for a 2-2 flying incarnation. As long as Wonder is in your graveyard and you control an island, creatures you control have flying. So, these creatures, there was a cycle of them created where the idea is they, once they hit the graveyard, then they actually act kind of like an enchantment for all of your creatures which is really, really cool conceptually. Like the idea of this being like, look at how wondrous this bird incarnation looks. You can see it just like hovering there in the air. The bottom of it's almost turning into mist. Like maybe this is the moment where it's been destroyed and it's misting and its entire being just is spread out amongst all of your creatures. And they're filled with this sense of wonder as all of a sudden, all these different creatures that are normally wandering terrestrial beings are now floating up in the sky and have the ability to fly around. Like, that is really cool. The flavor text says, it fell silently from the sky and broke the surface without a ripple. Was it even here at all? Dude, that's awesome. The fisherman who saw it was given a sense of wonder by its presence. I love this incarnation of like an emotion, a feeling. This is such a cool card conceptually. I really, really dig the incarnation. So I'm cool with them bringing it back. You will note now that it's been upshifted from uncommon and is now a rare. Let us move on because we have more delights to sample, my friends. Next up, we've got Squirrel Mab. So that's two green and one for a two, two. It gets plus one, plus one for each other squirrel on the battlefield. This is a reprint. So this is not a brand new card. The flavor text says an army of squirrels 
is still an army. Look, Card, you don't have to convince me, dude. I'm already convinced that squirrels are threatening. That one's gonna tear my arm off and stick it in a tree. So, this is a pretty solid card. The artwork literally shows a mob of squirrels coming at you, and that would actually be, I mean, squirrels are small and not terribly intimidating. But I'm actually, now that I say that, I remember when I was a kid, me and my sister were confronted by a rabid squirrel. It came chattering out onto the sidewalk, foaming at the mouth, and ga 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 ga. And I just stared at it like, whoa. Like, I didn't know what rabid things were, but like, we were young. And it just ga 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 ga. And I was like, whoa, I don't know what to do. And then it like started to like run at us. I grabbed my sister's hand and like, run. So, I mean, I've ran for my life from one squirrel. Imagine a whole mob of them. Good Lord. Anyways, let us move on. We've got. Fairy Seer. So this is a reprint from Modern Horizons 1. It's one blue for a 1-1 one, one flyer. When it enters the battlefield, scry 2. Flavor text says, The patterns of crossing ripples reveal the future to those who know how to read them. So, I mean, it's fine. It's a 1-1 one, one flying fairy for one overall. Sure, you know, it, it lets you see into the future. So that's cool. The idea that this, like, fairy would take you down by the waterside, just gently touch the water, psh, the water ripples out, and you get visions of the future... That's cool. And the wings and design overall of this fairy are funky. It's got like that butterfly style eyes on the wings sort of setup. So not too shabby, but ultimately not a super exciting card. Let's move on. Then we've got Break Ties. So this is one white and two for an instant. It is choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, exile target card from a graveyard. So you have all three of those options. Or... It also has Reinforce 1. So you pay 1 mana, discard the card, and put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature. So ultimately, this is a pretty versatile common in terms of the different abilities you can get. You can remove a problem from the graveyard or an artifact or enchantment from the board, and if none of those options feel good to you and it would feel like a dead card, you can even pitch it to make a creature bigger. Not too shabby. And you can see uh, what looks like a stopwatch that has been popped open but instead of the actual time face, you can see two individuals, lines of lightning crackling across them and breaking it apart here. So I guess that's supposed to represent the idea of breaking ties. I'm not, I'm not sure how the artifact, uh, like artwork, I should say, ties into the concept overall. But it is very striking looking. So let us move on to the next card. And that is Late to Dinner. So this is one white and three for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a food token. So this is a resurrection effect that also gives you a food to boot. And that's cool for the flavor aspect of the card. And the flavor text says, I knew you were set in your ways, friend. But even I didn't expect you to keep our engagement under the circumstances. So to me, this is really cool, right? The idea is that this rhino's friend, the elephant, has passed on to the other world and they had like a, like a dinner date, essentially. You know, they had a dinner engagement where they were supposed to hang out. And they both have this feeling of age to them. So they're like, I take it as they've been lifelong friends for a long period of time. And this rhino is like sitting by the fire. And then there's like the table is there and the empty chair that's reminding him of that his friend is gone. And then his friend just slowly fades into existence. And he brought food with him as well. Like not only did he show up, but he brought food and the rhino just takes it in stride. And it's like, I knew you were set in your ways, friends, friend, but even I didn't expect you to keep our engagement under the circumstances. Like that is really, really cool. I dig the vibe of it. And we have an extra layer of coolness because check it out. This is the sketch version of the card. And what's really neat to me about this is the flavor text on this sketch version is literally the instructions that Wizards of the Coast provided to the artist of the card so this is if you're wondering how wizards of the coast gives guidance to artists they will give them like a little blurb that explains to them what they're looking for so for this it said mood a friendship that can outlast death and i have to say they executed it quite well this card has that vibe and i love 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 the concept of sketch cards giving us an interview into the ideas, the, the actual concepts that Wizards put forth behind the card. And this isn't the only sketch card that we're going to get to see with that level of insight. But for me, I love this concept so much. The sketch cards, 
they definitely are exciting to me. These sort of like charcoal smudgings and things like that. It's really neat. Now, let's move on. We've got Prismatic Ending. One white and X for a sorcery that has Converge. Exile target non-land permanent if its mana value is less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast this spell. So I guess Converge is supposed to be based on the different number of colors of mana used to cast the spell. I, Converge doesn't feel familiar to me, which means either it's a very obscure keyword or something new they've just invented. The flavor text says, right before his demise, he experienced a shattering revelation. That's crazy. This has the vibe of being inside like uh, a religious building because the dude looks like he's wearing religious ornamentation and finery. And then behind him, you have like a stained glass style window that is being smashed open. So, I mean, that's not a great way to go, honestly. Not only your windows being broken, but so are you. Let us move on. We have, oh, what is this guy called? Sorry, I don't remember the name of this guy. This is a reprint from Modern Horizons 1. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's Ingenious Infiltrator. It's one black, one blue, and two for a 2-3 ninja. It ninjutsus for a black and a blue. And how ninjutsu works, if you're not aware, is when you're attacking with a creature, if it's unblocked, then you can ninjutsu this guy out in replacement. But you have to wait until after the declare blocker step, all right? And his ability is, whenever a ninja you control deals damage to a player, draw a card. All right, or it's probably combat damage. It's probably not just whenever they deal damage. But either way, this is a, a pretty straightforward ninja. I do like these old school borders. I like the old school gold borders specifically. And you can see this ninja has this crazy contraption that they're using to hang from the ceiling. And they've got the scroll in their hand like, yo, this is what I just stole from him. I brought you some knowledge, bro. Here you go. It works. It's not too shabby. It's one of the two cards we have today that is in non-English. All right. Then we've got... The other one that's not in English, and this is Sarah's Emissary, if I'm not mistaken. I know what the ability is for sure. This card is nuts. Three white and four for a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Wow, it's not even mythic. I thought it would be mythic. Okay, 7-7 seven, seven flying. When, this, when the Emissary enters play, choose a card type. So creatures, artifacts, sorcery, instant, whatever it is you want. Choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. So if you chose creatures, all your creatures and you have protection from creatures. So that means that if they attack you, oh look, I take nothing. Your creatures can't be blocked by their creatures. If you block their creatures with your creatures, your creatures take no damage. Like this is insane to me. This card is absolutely insane. And the artwork's quite nice too, right? Look at her. She's intense, man. She's got this very otherworldly feel to her where she definitely looks like a being made out of light. And that crazy halo that is emanating five spikes upwards, it actually looks very similar to the blade she's wielding. So it's almost like she has a crown of blades as well. But she looks fantastic in both versions. Because take a look. Here's the sketch version as well, which has a like a watercolor vibe to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's pretty funky overall. Like, take a look at the difference between these two. I definitely dig this. You know, obviously, I guess with cards like this that have too much, uh, too many words on them, they don't tell you the, the concept behind it. They don't have that little, like, mood. Here's what we're going for. But that's fine. Let us move on. The next it we have to look at is, look, it looks like they're going to be finishing up the sword cycle, most likely. So, Sword of Truth and Justice, done in the old school frame, looking quite amazing. Three mana to cast it. It equips for two. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from white and from blue. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control, then proliferate. This is a very solid card. Not all swords are born equal. Admittedly, this one isn't quite as exciting as some of the other swords, but it's still really, really strong. And the artwork looks great, right? You've got a you've got a hand up thrust holding this crazy blade that has both like blue and white mana energy emanating off the blade. You've got a dragon wheeling in the background with these crazy stone pillars spiking up into the sky. In front of a in front of a village, or not a village, I should say, in front of a city and a martial force in front that are sticking there. It's like there's a victory cry going up where all these spears are being raised. Huzzah! And the sword's like, thrust up, victory! It's got great energy to it. 
Let's move on, because we got a lot of cards to talk about. Universal Automaton, just like the sword, this is an old school boarded reprint uh, from Modern Horizons 1. So, this is a 1-1 one -one changeling. Within minutes, the strange device was indistinguishable from the others upon my workbench. All right. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Changeling means it counts as every creature type. So you've just got an automaton that can form itself into anything. All right. And you got what looks like some Star Wars droids hanging out on the artwork. Let's move on. Then we've got Hall of Heliod's Generosity. This is another old bordered reprint. So this is a crazy legendary land that taps for a colorless mana or pay one white and one, tap it. Put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. And it's the stronghold of Theros' Light. And you can see the artwork is awesome. You've got the night sky with Heliod looking amazing. Actually kind of framed by the pillars that are part of this shrine, right? Like you've got the proper building part of the shrine. But then you've got the pillars leading up to it. And they create this sort of box effect around Heliod, who looks amazing set against the night sky. And the light that's emanating from inside of the, the hall feels like it would be very inviting. You know, you're out at night, it's kind of cool in the air, and then you've got that bright, inviting warmth beckoning you inwards. I definitely dig it. Moving on. We got Fractured Sanity. This is crazy mill, man. Three blue for a sorcery that says each opponent mills 14 cards. 14 cards for three mana. That's insane. And it's one blue and one to cycle it if you don't want to cast it and you just want to draw a card. And when you cycle it, each opponent mills four cards. Like, no matter what, you're coming out pretty well with this. The flavor text says, the body grows stronger under stress. The mind does not. Eh, you know what? I mean, that doesn't sound unreasonable as flavor text. The artwork depicts a moon smashing apart some crazy like griffin looking kind of being like i don't know if you can see its body the same way but it looks like its head's up there and it's got arms reaching out and like and at the same time it feels like this isn't even the sky it feels like you're staring into the sea because you've got this crazy kind of like wave action going on so the whole thing is your is reality just snapping apart that's what this artwork is the magic is flooding through your brain and it's tearing your sanity apart and the moon breaks apart and it looks like the sky turns into a sea and crazy half indistinguishable monstrosities reside therein it's absolutely intense and check this out my friends this is the sketch version which gives us a little more insight into it because take a look at the flavor text it's another one of those little blurbs that they give to the artist so this one says action we'd like an epic abstract illustration of a fantastical moon in brackets not the real life earth moon which has cracked open that's all the artist was asked to do create an epic abstract illumination of a fantastical moon which is cracked open and this is the end result of being asked to create that i love it i love how this works where they don't they don't specifically restrain the artist too much they go here's what we're looking for show us what you can do and then the artist has free reign from that point to interpret and create what it is they think wizards of the coast is going to like want for the card i love it it's awesome i love getting an inner look like this i'm so excited about these sketch cards man i i can't wait to see more let's move on then we've got Lucid Dreams. Two blue and three for a sorcery that says draw X cards, where X is the number of card types among cards in your graveyard. Never be afraid to look where others can't or won't. So, I mean, the artwork on this is absolutely amazing, right? The idea is the concept of being a lucid dreamer. And if you don't know what a lucid dreamer is, a lucid dreamer is somebody who is aware that they are in a dream state, and as a result, they are a master of the dream and are able to shape the dream to their liking. There are people who have learned to do this, where they can control their dreams. And the artwork has such an awesome vibe. She's under the sea. She's got a ladder that's propped up on nothing. It's just staying up on its own. She's reaching up to the top of the, the, the ceiling of where she is, the surface of the sea, and either re probably like placing, I'm guessing, different colored fish up there because that's how she wants it to look. It's like she's taken the sea and created an underground room for herself where she's in control. And you can see some regular fish swimming by to see what's going on. But she's like decorating her ceiling with glowing fish 
and the door that is over on the side has stars and a moon so it's like the night sky is your door and there's a window over there like this is an inside undersea house there's so much going on in this artwork like dude if this was the poster for like an anime movie i would 100 percent watch it do you know what i mean just call it like twilight girl or something like that i would watch this this is i love this artwork so much this is so cool all right let's move on then we've got Turok's Canticle. Now, this card is very interesting. One black and three for a sorcery that says, Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card from it. That player discards that card, then discards a card at random. So this is somewhat a reference to him to Turok. And the flavor text extends that even further, where it says, The same hymns Turok sang to praise the Evan Praetor would later be adapted to glorify Turok himself. So Turok used to worship dark powers. And then he switched it around and essentially started his own cult, right? Which is pretty amazing. And the most amazing part about this card is it's very, very likely now that we're going to get Turok as part of the set. We've never had him as a card, so that would be very cool. And look at this artwork. This is intense, man. You have you have this um you have this dark priest. I don't know if this is actually supposed to represent Turok or if this is somebody who is literally like in the process of worshipping Turok, I can't really tell. But either way, you have this dark robed figure, you have a sacrifice that is laying on this altar, and there are all these candles that are there. And the candles are the same color as the waxy dead flesh of the being that's laying there. Or if he's still alive, then he is in a horrible spot right now. Because, I mean, look at the coloration of his skin. And then his body's like arced up as he's got his like hands thrown back oh dude it's intense and i love the way that the dark priest's hands like both people have their hands thrown back but like the the dark priest is done in victory with the moon behind it being framed and almost creating like a crown of victory and you've got like the the smoky mist flowing all around it this is a really really nice vibe right here next up we've got spreading insurrection one red and four. This one feels like it's set on Ixalan, doesn't it? One red and four for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature you don't control until end of turn. Untop that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Oh, it's got storm. Okay, all right. So if you can cast more spells before in the turn, then you could have more iterations of it go off. Flavor text says, everyone wants to be on the winning side. I'm going to be real. I feel like this isn't a very good card. Like, there are much better storm cards this is most of the time just going to be a very, very expensive way to steal one of your opponent's creatures. Maybe two? So this card, to me, doesn't seem very good. Although I do like the artwork, where you can see the crazed look in the eyes of all the beings portrayed here. Both the dinosaurs in the background and this warrior in the front have this crazy, enraged, red-eyed look. And they're all charging together as one so it definitely gives the proper flavor even if the card itself is underwhelming then we've got oh never mind that's it i was wondering as I, I felt like i'm like okay was insurrection the last card or were there any more so that wraps it up my friends thanks for coming by i'm gonna leave a link to my new lore video that's over on fantasy geographic so if you want to see dungeons and dragons magic the gathering lore check that out i'll also leave a link to our old school chandelier playthrough i don't know why i said our because there's only one of me but to anyways <laughs> if you want to come and check that out that'll be available big thanks to my patrons list the top patrons scroll it on by and i will see you guys all tomorrow for another fat batch of modern horizon 2 spoilers all right because we're gonna keep cranking these things goodbye for now my friends